I'd like to thank Doug. And, and here he is. Um, <laughs> for instance, um, for helping me understand the EHP sequence better and for showing me how to see the, the genus of a degree four plane curve without using uh, Riemann Hurwitz and uh, for, for being perceptive in all sorts of uh, wonderful ways. Um, uh, the, the work that uh, I'd like to tell you about is joint with Jesse Kath. And um, we're going to uh, talk about uh, defining uh, Euler number in the, in the growth and deep bit group and using it to count lines on a, a smooth cubic surface. And I'd like to start um, by uh, talking about the Euler number <laughs> and uh, also uh, the Eisenbud Levine Kim Shashbili signature formula. And then we'll do a uh, new thing. Um, uh, so, uh, Euler number. If we have a, a vector bundle on a manifold, so let's let this be a rank R uh, vector bundle, and X a smooth uh, real dimension R uh, compact uh, manifold. Um, we can ask that uh, V be uh, oriented, but let's weaken that a little bit and uh, say that uh, V is relatively oriented. Um, and uh, relatively with respect uh, to, to this manifold. So uh, 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 what we'd like is an orientation from the, the top wedge power of the tangent bundle uh, to the top wedge power uh, um, of the vector bundle. Um, and then uh, let's take a, a section that only has isolated zeros. Uh, so S a section of V to X um, with only uh, isolated zeros. And uh, the Euler number uh, can be computed with this section. And it's a sum over the points in x, um, which are zeros um, for, for the section um, of a local index or degree of the section. And um, this uh, local index um, uh, can be described as follows. We can choose, so here, here we're going to describe the, um, this local index, and we can choose a coordinates on the manifold near P. And we can choose a trivialization uh, of V. And uh, we'd like. Um, these to be uh, compatible with the orientation in, in the following way. So if we have coordinates uh, near P that are, so near P on X, so P is a point on X, V is a bundle, so we can choose a local trivialization, oh, a local trivialization. Um, uh, and uh, we, we want these to be compatible with the orientation so if we have coordinates we have nice coordinates for the the tangent uh, space so if we wedge our coordinates together that gives us a nice element of that wedge r tx and similarly for the the wedge r of v once we've chosen such things we get this element of hom and we'd like it to be positive and that'll make sense because when uh, when you have uh, an oriented um, uh, a line bundle, we have these uh, transition functions, um, uh, uh, which are positive. We can tell when something is a square. We can tell when something is positive. Um, 
And uh, this means that now S is a function. It was a section, but now it could be viewed as a function for some open subset of Rn um, containing P uh, to Rn. And um, so then we have a local degree. We have this the degree function uh, from homotopy classes of maps from Sn uh, to Sn uh, to Z. And we could take um, the, the degree of, um, uh, of a map, we, we'll take a small ball um, so that there are no other, no other um, zeros of our section that we assumed has only isolated zeros in this epsilon ball. And um, there are two things you could do. You could take the boundary, apply S, and uh, look at its form and get a map from Sn to Sn. Um, in a uh, in anticipation of wanting to do things more critically, um, let's make a, a function um, uh, from a pushout um, from this ball over this ball uh, minus the point to uh, our, I guess our rank was R. Um, to our uh, uh, affine space over R of dimension R um, and using uh, the, um, the embedding of this in, in Rn, this is actually a map from a sphere to a sphere, so we can take the degree of this function induced by, by S, and this is our local, um, our, our local degree. Um, so uh, there's a, a, a calculus uh, way to, to say what that, that local degree is. So we can um, also take the Jacobian at P, which is um, this determinant of um, the partials of S. Since S is a function from R uh, to R to the R to R to the R, we have these coordinate functions. Um, so S is S1, SR, and we can look at um, uh, the, the Jacobian determinant, and then uh, it's uh, um, it's a it's a nice uh, standard differential um, topology uh, that uh, if the uh, if the Jacobian determinant is positive, then uh, we get this degree um, is plus one. Negative, it's minus one, uh, and then uh, in general, um, uh, the the answer to what happens when um, the Jacobian is zero was actually uh, uh, a contribution to math from from 1978, which is uh, long after the the other. Um, so in general, this is going to be the signature of a. Um, uh, of a symmetric bilinear form that we're, we're about to, to review this. And this is no matter what, so including so J of P can be equal to zero here, and it, it works um, otherwise. And this is the uh, Eisenbud, Levine, Kim Shashvili uh, signature formula. Signature formula. This is Harold Levine, and we're going to talk about about Mark Levine um, in a little bit. Um, so uh, the signature of a symmetric uh, bilinear form over R is you can diagonalize such a thing, and you look at the number of plus ones minus the number of minus ones on the diagonal. So let's um, let's say what this is. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, Eisenbud uh, in, um, in, I guess, 79 uh, suggested uh, defining this over an, an arbitrary 
um, field, so K, any field. And in the signature formula, we'll take K equal to R and get a, a symmetric bilinear form over R. Um, and here's the uh, definition of uh, this symmetric bilinear form. It's on the following vector space. Um, we're going to take the functions um, uh, near our point. And um, so you can do these uh, uh, with, the, um, uh, with the analytic function germs and do a power series. We're going to move towards algebraic geometry, so we're going to view these as um, polynomial functions. Um, but if you'd rather do it in the, in the context of smooth manifolds, please take your, your function germs. So this is the, the local ring of functions at the point uh, P, all your function germs. So if you, if you like, do this. And what we're going to take away, uh, uh, take away the, the power series in a second. Um, and then uh, we're looking at this isolated zero. So we're going to divide by the coordinate functions of, um, uh, of our section. S is equal to zero. So this is uh, what the um, S equals zero uh, space looks like around P. And P is an isolated zero. Um, just meaning that there exists an open set U um, such that um, S is not equal to zero on U minus P. And that's the same uh, with some commutative algebra as saying that uh, Q is finite dimensional um, over K. So we have a finite dimensional vector space over K given by our functions near S equals zero. Um, so, uh, 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 moreover, um, Q is a complete intersection, um, and uh, that implies that um, it's self-dual. So the dual in, um, in Q modules can be identified with just homing uh, uh, Q to K. Um, is itself, and that's true for, uh, for any Gorenstein ring, um, but for uh, complete intersections, there's a distinguished uh, isomorphism. So there's a distinguished isomorphism, and uh, the version of this um, that um, we'll use is due to Steja Storch. Um, and so we can let one, which is an element of this ring, um, correspond to eta. And then um, this form that we set out to define, the omega EKL, is a symmetric bilinear form on Q. So it, it takes two things in Q and it spits out something in K. And if we took um, functions f and g in Q, these map under omega to eta of f times g. Um, and uh, this is, uh, uh, is defined in families. Um, so it's nice to have um, such a, a, a canonical um, way to, to write down omega EKL. But if we're just looking uh, at the signature, all we need to know is the isomorphism class. And if we just need the isomorphism class, this is uh, very easy to um, write down, so explicitly. Um, uh, and it's just as explicit when the characteristic is um, P, but it uses a distinguished Sokol element instead, and we have the Jacobian. So explicitly, what is, what is this uh, form in the eisenberg levine kim Shashvili signature formula? Um, we take any eta, choose any linear map eta from Q to K such that eta of the Jacobian um, is equal to the dimension of, of Q. And then you use the same uh, procedure. So in particular, if your Jacobian 
uh, was non-vanishing. So let's suppose that um, P is a rational point. So P has coordinates in K. And we suppose that the Jacobian at P uh, is non-vanishing, which means that uh, in Q mod the maximal ideal, it, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not in the maximal ideal. Well, then this, this is smooth. And uh, so you've got uh, a smooth, finite uh, 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 ring over K. So that means Q is just isomorphic to K. Um, and so our, um, uh, our omega EKL is going to take two scalars in K. Um, and uh, it's going to uh, spit out FG times, well, um, the, the Jacobian is, is something um, in, in K star. And the Jacobian has to go to the dimension, which is 1. So this has to go to 1 over um, the Jacobian. Um, and let's give notation for these uh, symmetric bilinear forms. So notation. Uh, J will denote the isomorphism class, the symmetric uh, bilinear form J K cross K to K, which takes um, F G uh, to, um, to uh, F G. Uh, over over J. Um, so uh, that is um, everything I wanted to say about um, the uh, eisenbud levine kibshashvili uh, signature formula. Um, and um, uh, at, the, at the end of uh, this article where Eisenbud was describing um, this work and suggested um, uh, defining the analogous omega EKL over any field, he asked what would happen if we defined the degree in this manner. So define degree. So this is a question of Eisenberg from the same article. Uh, define degree to be equal to EKL. And they, then he asked, is there an interpretation of this like a degree is in, uh, using cohomology? Um, uh, and there is. Um, it's the it's the degree in A1 homotopy theory. Um, There's an equality uh, between this form uh, and um, the local degree uh, in A1 homotopy theory. Um, and this equality takes place um, uh, in the growth and deep fit group. Um, so I'd like to uh, uh, define the terms on the right hand side. So um, here's the definition of the growth and deep fit group. So uh, GWK, um, we're going to take isomorphism classes of um, uh, symmetric non-degenerate of uh, symmetric uh, non-degenerate um, uh, bilinear forms. And this has a tensor product and a direct sum, and will uh, group complete with respect to direct sum, giving a direct minus, and then we'll get a ring. Um, 
and which is the definition of this, and it has a presentation. So its generators are the bracket J in the notation on the right. So it has generators J for J and K star, and um, a relation. Uh, there's, a, there's just one relation in characteristic, not two. Um, which says that J plus minus J is the same as one plus minus one um, for all J. Um, and uh, this is quite explicit in a lot of cases. If, um, oops, well, so if we changed basis here, um, if we, so here we have uh, K um, and we, we have this scalar F, but if we changed basis to multiply by A, um, then this would become, say, F over A. This would become G over A, so this would be changed by A squared. So we can really take our generators um, J to be in K star mod K star squared, and then there's, then there's one relation. Um, uh, so uh, if, you, if you have, if everything has a square root, then your only generator is one. Uh, so uh, anytime uh, you're algebraically closed, for instance, so the gross and fit group of C is Z um, via just taking the dimension, and uh, the gross and fit group um, of R is um, Z cross Z, taking uh, the rank and the signature. Um, and uh, the gross and vit group of uh, FP is um, the rank, and then you can take the determinant of an associated matrix. Um, and those are the two. Um, invariants which determine the isomorphism class. So we have uh, more information than just in Z, and in many cases you can explicitly um, calculate this information. And um, if um, uh, for, for an arbitrary field K, um, we have Milner's conjecture, which gives us uh, a lot of invariance uh, on, uh, on quadratic forms going farther and farther down uh, some filtration, and they, they can be made more or less explicit. Um, so you can get uh, invariants that can be counted or calculated out of um, out of the growth and decay group. Um, uh, well, so you could figure out the ring structure certainly here, um, and uh, um, the oh, this this is as a ring too, because then we we I, okay. Um, uh, so, thanks. So, Kyle's pointing out that for um, for the ring structure, we, we get we get that as the ring structure. Thank you. Um, and uh, these should all be ring homomorphisms too. Um, uh, um, so. So what is uh, the, the A1 degree? Um, we have um, a homotopy theory where we can take homotopy classes of maps um, between schemes. And I wasn't planning to say uh, too much about that, um, uh, but uh, Uh, if you take uh, RPN or, or um, uh, CPN, and um, it has a, a top cell, which is a sphere, and so we get um, some spheres uh, in uh, A1 homotopy theory, like so, and we'll, there are other spheres um, too. And Morel has a degree function from homotopy classes of maps. 
from this chair to itself um, for the, the growth and defit group, um, which is an isomorphism when n is greater than or equal to um, uh, 2. Um, and uh, you can similarly define the local degree of a function. If, so if, if s um, from a n or from a well a n to a n, um, the uh, the local degree of um, so s has an isolated zero at P, then we take uh, U, a neighborhood U uh, containing P, and we can make a, a function uh, induced by uh, S from U over U minus P to uh, AN over AN minus the origin. And again, using tangent spaces, um, this can be identified using purity and um, the trivialization of the tangent space. Um, uh, we can um, identify these as maps uh, from the sphere to itself. Um, so we can then apply Morel's degree function, and then uh, we have a local degree um, in, in A1 homotopy theory. Um, so let's use this local degree and make an Euler number. In, in the growth and defit group. So, um, we'll give ourselves a relatively oriented uh, vector bundle. So let's x be smooth, uh, proper, compact uh, dimension uh, r over k a field. Let's let v x be a relatively oriented uh, uh, vector bundle. Um, i.e., we have a line bundle exists L x line bundle and an isomorphism between um, the the square of L and uh, home from the top wedge of the tangent bundle to the top wedge uh, of V, and let's let S. Um, x to v be a section with only isolated zeros. Um, so we'd like to make the same definition. We'd like to say that the Euler number of v, and let's say with respect to s, we want this to be the sum over um, the, the closed points p such that s of p is equal to 0 of some local degree. And uh, the local degree um, uh, can be defined as follows. Um, we again want to, the same way as in the beginning, we'd like to choose a local trivialization of our vector bundle and local coordinates, that we don't have isomorphisms of local rings on, um, on coordinates to affine space with schemes. So let's uh, choose a local trivialization of V. And let's choose um, an etal map or etal coordinates, an etal map from U containing P in X uh, to uh, A R. And we want this to be an isomorphism on residue fields. So we want the extension of residue fields, uh, kp, and then uh, we can call this 
of phi to k. Um, no, this goes the other way. Um, we get an extension of, uh, of residue fields. Um, and we want this to be an isomorphism. So these are, uh, could be called uh, Nisnevich coordinates. And they exist in, in a lot of cases. For instance, if you had a perfect field. Um, uh, and uh, uh, if uh, you had a separable extension of residue fields and R was greater than 1, and uh, it's, or if you had a covering by affine space of your, um, of your X, which we will in, in the, the application. Um, uh, so um, here we, we've chosen some Nisnevich coordinates, and we want these to be compatible with a relative orientation. Uh, in the same way as before, we take the top wedge power of the associated trivialization of the associated basis um, uh, for the tangent space from the coordinates, and we get an associated basis for the top wedge power of v from the local trivialization, and we want it to be a square. And we know what a square means because um, uh, we, we have this uh, orientation. So these are compatible. With the relative orientation. Um, unfortunately, not every function on U, like S, S is the section, S is a, a function on U, but not every function on U is pulled back from a function on AR. That's a nice manifold property that you get this isomorphism of local rings. And for and for atoll, um, very tall coordinates, it doesn't necessarily follow that, that uh, S is really now a function from AR to AR. Um, but uh, it is up to a high power of the maximal ideal. So by modifying um, S by R tuples of uh, functions in a high power, of the maximal ideal, let's call that P, um, uh, S is, becomes a function on some open set of, of AR to, to AR. Um, uh, and this modification isn't going to change uh, the local degree. So once we've got a function from AR to AR, then we can use um, uh, uh, our formulas for the local degree. So then uh, defining our, our local degree. Um, and to show that uh, it's invariant of the choice, there's some finite determinacy results um, on uh, this, the eta or the um, eisenbud levine kivshashvili uh, signature formula. Um, uh, so uh, we now have um, the, the local contributions, the local degree for this section. And then uh, we can show chose a different section that were connected by um, sections also with only isolated zeros in a family over uh, A1, then this um, uh, element of the gross and bit group called the Euler number is, is the same. So we'd like this to be well defined for the vector bundle, not for the vector bundle in the choice of section. So. sections are equal um, if S and S prime belong to a family parameterized by A1, of sections with isolated zeros. Um, and uh, 
uh, if you can connect all your sections uh, in that way, then you're going to get one Euler number um, uh, for, for the vector bundle. Uh, there's an alternate approach that was developed this year by Mark Levine. Not from the signature formula. And uh, it uses oriented chow vit, oriented chow or chow vit groups um, of large morel. Um, and also worked on um, by Fazel. And you can form, you can take the, the uh, chow vit groups of X uh, twisted um, by a line bundle. And there are um, Euler classes. So given V X vector bundle, um, there's there's an Euler class. In fact, there there are a couple. You get um, a, a, um, a construction using um, the six operations on um, oriented Chow, and you have an obstruction theory Euler um, uh, Euler class in um, so if this is rank rank n on x, um, uh, uh, then uh, we'll get an element of um, oriented chow um, n x twisted by the determinant um, uh, of uh, the vector bundle, and um, these were defined um, by Barge Morel and Morel. And they were further worked on by Fazel. And then they're equal up to a constant in the growth and Grothendieck-Vit group. Maybe that's 1, as shown by Ashok Fazel, when the determinant is trivial. And then Mark Levine um, this year got rid of the trivial determinant um, uh, condition. Um, and there's a push forward in uh, oriented Chow. So let's let x. Um, the uh, dimension R and proper, then uh, we can push forward um, well, let's do X to spec K um, from if we take the highest wedge power of the tangent bundle to X um, uh, uh, sorry. Um, so, uh, well, uh, uh, this is true too. But um, there's a, a, an isomorphism. Um, that, uh, there's a, a, a block has a formula for Chow in terms of cohomology of, um, uh, of Milner K theory, and we have an analog. We have the Nisnevich cohomology of X uh, with coefficients in Milner Witt uh, uh, K theory. Um, and uh, let's push forward um, in. Um, And we push forward by R, and we'll get H minus R X K minus of it um, N minus R. Oops, so push forward is spec K. Um, so if we um, uh, had a vector bundle um, such that uh, when we took its highest wedge power, determinant V, that produced um, the same thing as this twist from the push forward. Then we could get a class, so n equals r. We obtain a class or classes in the growth and bit group uh, uh, of K. Um, and uh, this uh, uh, is more powerful because you don't have the restriction on sections. Um, the, the approach I uh, outlined uh, first has the uh, computation of the local indices built into it. Um, so uh, I, I hope it's nice to have uh, the two um, 
the two approaches, and um, presumably these are the same, um, and, and that should be written down. Um, so let's use this. Um, To, uh, to get more information out of um, uh, counts um, from classical enumerative geometry that are picking up um, uh, things about uh, the arithmetic of the field. So, um, so uh, application uh, to enumerative uh, geometry. Um, uh, there's uh, the, the count of uh, lines on a uh, smooth uh, cubic uh, surface. Um, so let's let F um, be uh, homogeneous and polynomial. Um, uh, in four variables of degree three. And let's let, um, let's look inside um, uh, 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 P3. Let's look at the, the locus where um, um, uh, F is equal to zero. It's a, a 19th century result. Uh, of Salmon and Cayley. So in 1849, um, Salmon wrote an article where he gives a lot of credit to Cayley for the case that if your ground field is, is C and the complex numbers, there are always uh, 27 uh, lines on uh, S. And then uh, in the 21st century, uh, a Koenig and Telemann and um, the nation Parlamov um, observed that there's um, a lovely invariant count for real lines, but it's not the number of real lines, the number of real lines, so for k equals r, the number of real lines is not fixed. There can be uh, 3, 7, 15, or 27 um, real lines. And um, uh, one can see from tables where people uh, compute all of these things um, that, that uh, um, well, they, so there are, lo there are lots of great things computed about lines on a cubic surface. And there's a classical distinction between hyperbolic lines and elliptic lines. Um, and uh, you can see from tables um, uh, from the, the mid-20th century that the number of hyperbolic lines minus the number of elliptic lines this is for k equals r, um, is in fact invariant. No matter what the, the surface is, it's, it's always uh, uh, three. But Akonik, Telemann, Tanash, and Karlamov seem to be the, um, the, the first people to uh, observe that. And they gave um, uh, uh, the following explanation um, for this. So. Um, And these are all lines over R. So these are the number of hyperbolic real lines, number of elliptic real lines. Um, and uh, the, uh, 
uh, their proof um, uh, goes like this, and it's it's also um, based off of one of the um, the proofs that there are 27 uh, lines over C. So we'd like to, to count the lines on a on a smooth cubic surface. Um, so let's look at all of the lines in P3. So let G W13 uh, uh, be equal to the Grassmannian parameterizing lines um, in P3. And this is equivalent to parameterizing um, uh, dimension 2 um, uh, sub-vector spaces uh, of our fixed um, k uh, k to the 4, which we could projectivize to get P3. Um, and uh, on this, we can uh, form the following vector bubble. So let's let V to the Grassmannian 1, 3 um, be the vector bundle um, whose fiber uh, V over some space, some subspace W. So let's say our dimension 2 subvector space will be denoted W in K4. Um, and uh, we'll take all of the, uh, the degree 3 linear functions, I mean degree 3 polynomial functions on W. So we'll take sim 3 of, um, of W dual. And um, our equation, cutting out S, so S was determined by this polynomial F being 0. So F determines a section of this bundle. So F determines uh, the section S of V, um, uh, where uh, S um, on the, uh, the dimension 2 vector subspace W um, is um, the function F restricted to W. So F is homogeneous of degree 3. It restricts to W. That's a, uh, an, uh, an element of sim 3 of, of W dual. And when does, um, when does S, our surface, F equals 0, has a, have a line? So the line L corresponding uh, to W uh, is in S, our surface, this is capital S equals 0, uh, if and only if this section little s, uh, s, little s is 0 on um, w or, or l. So the, the zeros of our section correspond to the lines um, uh, on the cubic surface. Um, so the, uh, the Euler number um, of v, assuming it can be relatively oriented, which can, it's not orientable, but it, it's relatively orientable. Um, this is uh, a sum over the lines L in capital S of the local degree um, at uh, L um, of, of little s. And over C, everything is orientable. So um, this degree L of s is, is always uh, 1. Um, the, uh, um, the, the corresponding, uh, you know, local, that, that, um, the, this local degree is always 1 um, over C, and, and over R, um, uh, the, the local degree is 1 when you're hyperbolic. And uh, minus one when L um, uh, 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 is elliptic. Um, so uh, uh, we'd uh, we'd like to now count um, uh, 
the, the lines on a smooth surface over an arbitrary field um, using the Euler number uh, in the growth and mean fit group. Um, so this is actually entirely classical. The, the, in here, we're over R or over C. So we're actually just computing the local index of the vector field like in the, yeah. Um, and uh, so to, to generalize this, let's um, give a, another um, definition of what hyperbolic and, and elliptic uh, mean. We could use that as a definition of hyperbolic and elliptic. Um, but there was a, a, a classical um, uh, definition. So um, I see I'm, I'm going pretty slow here. So, um, ah, well, OK. So uh, here's, here's a, a classical way to distinguish uh, hyperbolic and elliptic lines. So let's let L and S be a line on our surface. Um, there is an involution classically uh, associated to L, which uh, switches P and Q uh, if they have the following relationship to each other. So if we have uh, P and L, we can form the uh, tangent plane to, to S uh, at P. Um, and uh, uh, we can intersect this with S itself. And it has to contain L, because uh, L is a straight line. And then it has to contain something else of degree 2, because S is of degree 3. So there's some degree 2 um, conic uh, C. And uh, C intersects L in two points, uh, P and Q. And I exchanges uh, P and Q. So we have an involution on this line L, which is P1. So um, L, so, so I is then an element of um, PSL2 um, because it's an automorphism of um, uh, P1. And elements of PSL2R can be uh, separated into hyperbolic or elliptic depending on whether they have their two fixed points are real or their complex conjugate. Um, and this is, so uh, hyperbolic, L is hyperbolic if and only if um, the fixed points of the involution are defined over R, but we'll say defined uh, over K. And it's elliptic if they're defined over a, a, a degree 2 extension. So let's state the main result. Let's define the type of a line um, L. So now we'll let um, so K arbitrary. Um, let's let uh, the, the type of um, uh, the line L. And now L is a closed point of the Grassmannian, because that was our definition of the Euler characteristic. And a closed point of the Grassmannian, it might be a line defined over an extension. Um, but um, in any event, we have um, this involution also defined over that extension. And so we're going to take minus 1 in the notation from before, the a1 degree um, uh, of, the, of the involution i. And there's also uh, a trace map. So uh, there's a trace map from the growth and bit group of the field of definition of our line, which might not be um, the, the ground field, to um, our ground field. The fields of definitions of the lines are actually always separable. And uh, it takes a bilinear form. If we had some bilinear form B from B cross B to K of L, this trace um, takes this B to the, the form uh, that goes V cross V and then does B and then takes the field trace down to K. So we have a map from uh, the, uh, the growth and fit group of this extension to this slide. 
to the to the uh, to the ground field. So uh, the result. perfect of um, uh, a characteristic uh, not equal to 2, uh, then if you take the sum over all the lines uh, L in oh, let S be a smooth cubic surface. Um, uh, if you take the sum over all the lines of this trace from the field of definition of uh, the type, as in that uh, definition on the left, then you always get a single invariant uh, element of uh, the growth and bit group, um, uh, which is 15 times 1 plus 12 um, uh, times negative 1. And if you apply the rank, you get the result over C implies the K equals C result from before. You apply the signature, you get the K equals R, the, the, the result uh, that um, you get 3 hyperbolic minus elliptic. If you uh, work with uh, K is a finite field and apply the discriminant, then you get um, that the number uh, uh, of um, uh, hyperbolic lines um, with uh, uh, even, even um, with field of definition uh, f p um, 2 a plus the number of elliptic. Again, there's only one non-square in, in fp mod fp star. So you're either hyperbolic or you're elliptic uh, in the sense over here. Either your fixed points are defined over k or they're defined over the unique degree 2 extension of fp, which is fp squared. So that we get a definition of hyperbolic lines and elliptic lines. Um, so number of elliptic lines uh, with field of definition F P two A plus one is congruent to zero uh, mod mod two, um, uh, um, uh, which is new. Um, all right. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>